as you can see you have your false account server settings and uh, the server setting is mainly used so that you can go ahead and configure the environment so one of the more common things that you'll be changing here is the host name the port number the location of the repositories the database the IP it's identifying automatically but if you do have a static IP or a specific IP that you want to configure for that's something that you can go ahead and do as well you can also go ahead and choose the network interface and at this moment you can give the administrator a name say for example I'm going to give my name and I'm going to give my email ID the reason I would do this is because I want to go ahead and make sure that if I'm going to do any administrative work I need to be able to communicate that to everybody else and one of the email IDs that I would be using is this one also for password reset and other things you would want to go ahead and use this as well should you need the requirement where uh, source code is being passed over the network you can also go ahead and encrypt the connection and make sure that all transfers are encrypted so this is how you want to go ahead and configure the administrative console for um, um, SVN or Collabnet subversion edge as far as authentication goes one of the good things with subversion is that it does support Windows authentication so you can go ahead and populate your L directory details and that will go ahead and make sure that all users can use their Windows login to directly check in code otherwise you'd need to configure users via this screen and give them a username password and they would need to type in this username password when they're trying to connect to subversion and check in code just like what we did here when we logged in using administrator username and password you'll also maybe want to make it consistent by converting usernames into small case or uppercase depending on what the requirement is just so that uh, these things uh, are considered and that case sensitivity doesn't become too much of a factor as you can see here we have proxy configuration as well you'd normally want to go ahead and use this if you're trying to expose subversion over an internet or intranet and you want people to be able to connect remotely as well for the purpose of this demonstration I'm basically just going to leave this blank because I would be using subversion directly on the same laptop where it's installed it might not seem like a great idea because ultimately if the hard disk does crash I would lose both subversion code as well as the, um, the data that's directly hosted on my system so for most purposes you would need to go ahead and configure a proxy server port number and a username password and a host name in order to be able to con connect and configure subversion remotely as well automatic updates and things like that basically internet access is what you would want to be worried about here also you have the ability to go ahead and configure an email so that you can send user emails invites password resets things like that via a subversion dedicated email address the logging as you can see is again very straightforward you got a housekeeping ability in order to indicate uh, how many files you want to keep in, tr uh, in your repository to track events that are going on and for the most part the console level is warnings you can go ahead and use this if you ever feel that you need to go ahead and monitor additional events as well other than this the next thing that you want to look at is basically users as you can see here I've just got an administrative user and that's uh, the only login or user that you would get initially in addition to this you can also see that there are different types of admin roles the idea with the role is that you can go ahead and configure some people as administrators who are pretty much able to do anything that they want within subversion you also have a user role which is basically a person who's allowed to check in code into a repository in subversion and then you have role administrator for system and then you got repository administrators in case, in case you have uh, multiple users and uh, one of them is going to be responsible for managing a particular repository the good thing about subversion is that you can install one version of subversion and then have multiple different development projects going on parallelly each with their own repository and each with dedicated user access it's always a good idea to go ahead and configure at least two full remote uh, role admins and one repository admin per project or per repository hooks are basically scripts that you can execute as part of a pre check-in or post check-in validation sometimes just to make sure that uh, you might want to make sure that every code that's being checked in has some kind of comment against it so you can quickly identify what the change is about for those things you can create something called hooks and the hooks will go ahead and do these validations for you whenever code is being imported or exported out of subversion so once you've identified the roles the next thing that you would probably want to do is create a user 
if you click the create button on the bottom right corner of that screen you go ahead and then type in a username and you can just go ahead and type in uh, the details for that user And for the purpose of this particular demonstration, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a normal user role permission as well as a r administrator for a repository so that I can go ahead and create my own repositories. At this point, the user has been created and as you can see, it's successfully created with the two permissions that I wanted. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and configure a repository or basically a piece of uh, area on a hard disk where you can check in code for this particular development project that you're creating. So let's go ahead and press the create button here and I'll say uh, sample oops, repository and at this moment I'm gonna go ahead and just create using the standard template so you can see that I've got uh, a standard template that will create uh, three main folders which is a trunk, branch and fa tag structure. You can also go ahead and create an empty repository in which case it will just be a folder and then you would need to go ahead and configure it on your own. Also you can go ahead and pick up a repository or restore a repository using the backup as you see here. So let's go ahead and just use create a standard repository and once that's done you'll see that uh, the repository is done it's okay at the moment there's no data being collected and you get some very standard basic information in addition to certain template files that you have here these are basically the hook files that I was mentioning earlier and are required in order to basically validate what kind of operations are allowed or not allowed on this particular instance the next thing that you want to do is configure the access rules as you can see here right now we've got everybody having read write access on the subversion for this particular repository you can also go ahead and configure users for subversion and you can see that there are plenty of information or screens that's available within subversion itself on how to go ahead and configure users you generally need to go ahead and type in the username and password and then specify the permission access that they have you can also go ahead and uh, put in details about what permissions or what uh, repositories or what folders in a repository they might have access to. This is often useful when you're trying to control the behavior that a person has on the subversion website or your internal subversion repository. Let me just go ahead and quickly show you an example of how to add a user here. As you can see here, this is an example of how you can allow a person to go ahead and access a particular folder within the repository. As you can see, pretty much everybody can read, but Alice and Bob can read and write as well. All you need to do is edit the file and copy this information over, at which point you'll be able to go ahead and configure SVN to give Alice and Bob read and write permissions. So in this particular example, what I would want to do is I want to go ahead and grant myself giant which is my username equal to read and write because again I'm the administrator so I just come here type in giant equal to rw and that's pretty much it as far as granting permissions are concerned so you can see that it's been saved successfully the next thing is the backup schedule and it's very self-explanatory as far as how you want to configure the backup all you need to do is uh, specify the number of backups that you want to create and then you can specify deltas if you're dealing with very large backups the type of backups that you have here and the schedule under which the backups need to be taken the last thing is basically templates and uh, you can use a template if you're interested in trying to make sure that every repository has a specific predefined set of uh, files available in them for example this particular template says that you'll always go ahead and have a very uh, standard template in terms of uh, the three folders that need to be created so this is all really that uh, you need to do as far as configuring subversion is concerned. 
and uh, as you can see we've created a repository and we've created users and we've got administration running now that everything is running if you go ahead and start subversion okay so I've got a problem here because it's port numbers uh, already being used so I need to go ahead and change that so I'm gonna make this 8084 and then save that and you can see now subversion is up and running and these are the location of my repository so if I go ahead and click on this it'll open up subversion and say uh, this is where your data is stored and uh, can't really remember the password but I'm just gonna try this okay let me just go ahead and change my password just a second <laughs> 